Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. In one of my previous videos, I finished making the front design for this stacked subwoofer box. Now in that last video, I was talking a lot about how we could prepare this box to be completely wrapped in vinyl. I was talking about how we could have an exact gap for the transition between the different layers of vinyl. And I'm actually really impressed with you guys because a couple of you noticed something really important. When we're making a complicated subwoofer box like this, it's really critical that we, of course, think about how we are going to finish it, how we're going to wrap it with material. And there's a big challenge right here. How can we possibly transition vinyl from this surface here around the port to the inside of the port and make it look good. The challenge with this location is that it has this curve around it. So if we're going to add a piece that will allow us to transition the vinyl, we have to make sure that that piece can curve. This may seem like not a big deal, but challenges like this are something that come up quite often during the custom fabrication process. So it's really important that we understand some different game plans for how we can attack an issue like this. So do we wanna use wood or do we maybe wanna use a plastic material? Let's decide because that's coming up in this video. Let's get started. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, I like to do car audio reviews and car audio lessons and tutorials and build blog videos like this video where I actually go through the step-by-step -step thought process and actual fabrication process of building some of these different things for custom car audio. If you are new here and you would like to subscribe so that you're notified when I upload future videos, that of course would be appreciated. So here's where I'm at so far on my thought process and what I wanna do with this. So I know that I absolutely definitely want to add a second piece that somehow covers this port. And the reason for that is because on the inside cutout of that piece, I want to be able to attach grill cloth. Grill cloth is acoustically transparent. It will allow the port to breathe, but at the same time, it's going to hide the port. So anyways, because I know I need to add a piece here, I know that I'm gonna have to somehow bend something. And at first I was testing wood. Now a way you can actually bend wood like this, and this is actually one of the first videos I ever made here on YouTube, is you can cut this series of cuts in it using the table saw. Now the trick here is you don't cut all the way through the material. So what that allows you to do is actually bend the material like so. Now you can see on my little sample here that I actually cut out the inside first. And the reason I did that is I wanted to see once I cut this and bent it, kind of the geometry it would give me as I bent around this curve. And if I'd be able to control that and if it would work okay on the port. Now, just so you guys fully understand, this is just a test piece. This isn't what I would actually have the part look like. But the problem here with the wood is if I use the wood, the wood would actually work pretty well, but the problem is I'd have to load this up with body filler or wood glue. I'd have to then clamp it in place and let it dry. And it's just a lot of extra time and steps. So what I want to try to do, what I prefer actually, is I'm going to use this sheet of PVC. This material is a half inch thick. It bends very well once we actually heat it up, but I do have a few minor concerns. My concerns are I'm going to need to make a cutout in the shape that's about the same size as that port. And what I'm worried about is because the port is so close to this radius here, this curvature, I'm afraid that once I go to actually form the finished part, I'm afraid that it's gonna slightly warp the cutout that's around the vent so I guess we'll see what happens. Hopefully we won't have a problem there. Hey, this is just one of those things that we have to kind of figure out as we go. First things first, let's get a measurement here because I'm actually gonna cut this material down to size. I think if I do eight inches wide, that should work well. I've got my piece here that I cut down, but before I go crazy with actually shaping this thing the way I want it to be shaped and adding the cutout and everything, I just want to test the PVC and see how well it bends. So this is the piece that I cut off. Uh, it was a little bit of extra. So I'm going to heat it up with a heat gun and just, just barely heat it enough that it allows me to bend it. And let's see how this goes. Well, test confirmed. I think that'll work out okay. 
Let's see what happens. I've got my design laid out here. I measured the center point and then I measured an offset from each side for the actual port size itself. Then I also use some chamfer templates into the corners because I'm actually going to cut these sides off like so. That way it will kind of match some of the other design within the vehicle on the amplifier rack. Rough cut time. Now the reason that I rough cut it like that is just to save a little bit of work for the actual router bit itself. That way it doesn't have to work quite as hard. But I'm gonna apply some template tape here. And now I'm going to use four scrap pieces of wood. I actually cut these out from any of the leftover wooden material that I have after projects. Having stuff like this really comes in handy during projects. The amount of material that I'll have left between the inside of the port face here and the actual outside of this piece that I'm creating is pretty small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some more template tape and I'm actually going to stick the router shield here on top. And the reason I'm doing that is it will help keep these two wood pieces stuck to the workpiece because right now they're only held on by a very small amount of template tape. And I'm afraid that once I start routing, they might actually see how this one's kind of easily falling away. I don't want that to happen. There we go, that should be nice. To cut the plastic material, I'm gonna be using this quarter inch spiral flush trim bit. This is actually an up cut bit, and up means it cuts towards the direction of the router itself. So in this case, since we have the router mounted upside down in the table, it's gonna be pulling the materials down into the table. Got our piece all cut out, the port's all cut out. I've made that chamfer on the corners. You can see using the router just gives you some really, really nice, perfect results. Now, before we continue, I'm actually going to make a copy of this shape just in case when I bend it, something goes wrong, then I don't have to redo this work. There we go, nice little Oreo looking sandwich right there. That's triple stuffed if you ask me. Now this is really important. Before I get to bending this, I need to do the edge profiling. And the reason is once this piece is bent, we're not really gonna be able to run it through the different router bits here on the router. So I'm gonna start with using this chamfer bit. It'll give us some nice shape on the outside of this profile. I've got the chamfers around the outside perimeter here. As you can see, I've also done them on the inside of the port. And what's happened is since these two surfaces are so close to each other, you can see that the lines actually converged and it adds a little bit more unique shape. It actually drops the curve down there, but I end up with a real hard, sharp line. I'll probably knock that down a little bit with sandpaper just to round it over just slightly. Now, if you watched the last video when I did the front of the box, you probably know what's gonna come next. Right now, you can see the back of this piece, once we wrap vinyl material around it, it the material would actually bunch up on the back side. So once we went to sit it flush on the box, it wouldn't sit down flush because that material would be bunched up. So what I need to do is actually use this router bit here, and I'm going to add a small step onto the back side of this piece. So here's what that step looks like and it gives us that gap that once we set it onto the box, see the gap there? That's going to allow for the thickness of the vinyl material. I applied a bunch of template tape to the back side of this piece and the reason that I did that is I want to hold it temporarily here on the box and I'm hoping that as I roll it over onto the enclosure itself, I'll be able to kind of stick it and hold it in position so it can cool into the perfect shape. Well guys, we're gonna have to chalk that one up as a lesson learned because what happened, I was able to actually get most of the bend out of this that I was hoping for, but there was one problem. No matter how much I heated this, this middle part here, I was just pressing it as much as I could and I could not get it to actually form. And that's because it's so thin through here, it just wanted it to pull away. Unfortunately, that didn't work out as planned. And then once I went to take it off, it ended up snapping. 
Ugh. I'd rather show you guys when this kind of thing happens so that you don't make the same mistakes I did. Unfortunately, this isn't gonna quite work out like I was hoping for, but this isn't to say that you couldn't use this same technique on something for your project. I would just make sure that you have much more of a wall from the outside edge to the inside edge here. If this would have just been a small cutout and this wall over here was much more thick, I don't think it would have been a problem. It definitely wouldn't have been a problem if it was a solid piece. So you could still use this technique if you were adding some kind of insert around a curve, but I need to come up with something a little bit different. Luckily we copied this piece earlier. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use this wooden piece I like the idea of it being a little bit thinner so it doesn't protrude as much from the outside of the box. I'm going to cut off this top part so that I don't have to bend around at all. And what I think I'm gonna do is using the router, I'm gonna to try to make a piece that will fill in between the back of this and where this curvature starts. And I can then form that in using body filler. Eh, you guys will see, let's go. So using the cove bit here, here's what I did. I actually took a half inch piece of wood and I applied this cove to it. And then over on the table saw, I cut it so that all I had left was this little strip here. The reason I did this is if you take this piece that we've made to cover the port and I put it here, you can see that we actually have a void here up at the top where it starts to curve away. With this piece that I've made, you can see that I can actually fill part of that void. I've got this bottom piece template taped temporarily onto the enclosure. Then I'm gonna take this piece and just slide it in here. I've got it cut to size. There's a little bit of a corner gap here, but that's perfect because that gives me a little spot to kind of weld this together using CA glue. Hit it with some activator. Now, since I'm gonna mold around the outside edges of this piece with body filler, I'm protecting it with some protective masking tape. Next, I apply a piece of template tape to the box and then I stick the piece into position. I'm using some foam tape from my show sponsor, Mobile Solutions. This tape is approximately 1 32nd inch in thickness, which means it's about the same thickness as one layer of vinyl. This transition point will have two layers of vinyl in total, so I'm wrapping around twice. Now, using some automotive body filler, I'll smooth the body filler around the outside of the shape. If there is any excess material, I come back and clean it up before the body filler cures. This will save me a little bit of time with sanding later. I've given the body filler plenty of time to dry, so I'm going to pop out my insert piece here. I'm going to have to be really careful not to break anything because now the body filler is holding it in along with that piece of template tape. There we go. All you're really gonna do is just knock this down so it's nice and smooth. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Now through the magic of video editing, I've added some body filler to some of the low spots that were on the sides of the box, sanded that down. And then of course I've finished doing the body filler around this insert here. I've got some template tape on it right now just so we can stick it in temporarily so you guys can get an idea. And there we have it. So you can see now we have a nice transition gap that when we wrap these different pieces with vinyl, it'll have a transition from vinyl to vinyl. That way I can hide all of the different seams. Sorry that the PVC didn't quite work out the way that I was hoping for it to. It was just because I had that large cutout for the port. If you didn't have that and it was just a solid piece, you could definitely easily form that and use it as an insert if you were doing something similar on your build. If you're new to my channel, I do car audio reviews and lessons and build log videos like this video. So if you are new, I hope that you consider subscribing. A special thanks goes out to John, Brian, Ali, Jerry, EJ, Emmanuel, and Truman, and the rest of the Patreon support team. A big thanks to these guys for helping crowdfund the making of this content. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do that here on screen. And as always, guys, thank you for watching.